Ododo Diodo constituency, Nilante Bannerman. And a lot of people have expressed worry that he indicated during his press conference that if the police um, refuses to do something about the situation, they will not have any other choice than to take the law into their own hands or probably put measures in place to protect themselves and the ballot papers. But let's have a further conversation with a security analyst to uh, tell us what the stakes are with regards to the over 4,000 hotspots that have been identified ahead of the elections, of course, with a case study of that particular constituency. Adib Sani has joined us uh, via Skype. Good morning, Adib. Good morning. Thank you for joining us this morning. That first question I would want to ask. So over 4,000 hotspots have been identified this year. I do understand that back in 2016, it was about 5,000 hotspots. Now, give us a, you know, a history of the number of hotspots that have been identified over the years with regards to elections. Will this year and that of 2016 be the highest in terms of number of hotspots identified? Well, yes, indeed, um, because our democracy is changing. Um, uh, we now have emerging issues of uh, vigilantism and uh, rising state of insecurity, especially in the run-up to um, elections in the last part of the Fourth Republic. Mm. As a matter of fact, this year I might not be able to give you the, the breakdown, but this year it's obviously... Um, the largest number of hotspots um, yet, mm. um, for obvious reasons, because the stakes are high. Um, they are what we call early warning signal, signal mm. or signs. Mm. That points to a very worrying trend, so far as this year's election is concerned. I am particularly appalled and disappointed in the various political parties for their inability to show commitment towards the burden vigilante group despite the existence of anti-vigilantism and other related offenses law. Mm. And despite the fact that they have on countless occasions met with the Peace Council and other stakeholders and appended their signature to documents we are affirming their commitment to dealing with the issue. Yes, uh, we're still here. Um, on the issue of hotspots, it is important to first of all uh, put it in context. Mm -hmm. Hotspots are usually um, based on certain signs that is picked up okay, by various okay. stakeholders, whether it is the police or peace monitors or even the intelligence community. Every police station at the end of the month or quarterly basis um, gives their statistics or reports of some sort to the divisional police command, which in turn reports to the regional police command that is eventually fed into the national statistics. And based on the statistics, especially uh, pertaining to political violence, they are able to establish that, yes, indeed, this mm -hmm. is the cause for it or not. Um, aside that, they look at the history of the place. I mean, if you don't know anything about politics in Ghana, you definitely know about the Duke of yeah. You definitely know about Atawasi. These are areas that have been very consistent in the level of violence that usually occurs in the run-up to the election. I don't know what is wrong with these two candidates, uh, but I think these two candidates are uh, 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 the cause of what is going on there with the kind of tension, with their rhetoric, drawing the battle lines to their news conferences. It's not really helping uh, the situation. Mm. No longer can you, like the Vanda Point, claim or allege that you are slapped in front of the James Town police station, yeah. and nobody can do anything about that. Now it is. Someone's word against another person's word. So, what is the police doing on this occasion? But back to the issue of hotspots. So, upon realizing okay, that these areas are noted for their political volatility and uh, the vulnerability to violence, are taking into consideration certain social, economic, and so political dynamics mm. or depth in that area, we are supposed to put certain mechanisms on the ground. One, improve security either by having more men on the ground or improving mm. intelligence so they are able to prevent and prevent some of these things from happening. Okay. Um, secondly, um, the political actors there would have to, to respect the public order act. I was listening to uh, President Okori, the director of operations, talking to some Nigerians about a week or two ago at uh, somewhere around New Town mm. about the fact that we have laws in Ghana before you embark on an end-time process, you have to inform the police by this. But the question is, 
do these political parties inform the police when on a random basis they can decide to go on a peace war or a peace march? They don't do it with recourse to the law, man. Because if they are yeah. done, to have trust the police to have put certain measures on the ground, including either making one party have this difference today, the other small, or perhaps uh, 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 clearly defining their route. Mm -hmm. So they don't have contact with each other. So they okay. play first with regard for the law by the uh, party. And most importantly, you could even fight the police by going the extra mile to completely ban okay, politicians from holding certain political events in this area as a means of ensuring uh, uh, peace. Unfortunately, on this occasion, uh, the hot spot is existing on paper, but yeah. not quite on the ground, uh, which, which is quite disturbing, because what is happening is just a great result to a lot more we can expect. Okay. To okay. Oh. Now, now, talking about the police service, of course, after they came out with the hotspots, so we're expecting that they will deploy uh, enough security men or personnel to these areas that they have described as hotspots. But again, looking at the ratio, we know that the UN ratio says one policeman to 500 citizens. Unfortunately, as it stands now, we have one policeman pay about 850 citizens. And so looking at how thinly spread uh, we have our security personnel and the issue of policing, Really, are we ready and will we be able to cover all these hot spots and police these areas ahead of the elections and even during? Well, we should not only be concerned about the hot spots. Um, violence can, you know, play at any time, anywhere. So it is important, in as much as we're concerned about improving security at hot spots, we should also provide security at the non hot spots because, I mean, anything can happen at any time. Um, I was listening to the Interior Minister mm. um, about two weeks ago when he was just trying the position of security to parliament. Yeah. we have a <laughs> And I wonder where he gets his figures from because as a Minister of Interior, you know how many police officers we have in Ghana. A lot of them, you know, Bella, your calculation, the one to um, 850, mm. it is assuming. No police officer is on this people. No police officer has been assigned to an MP or a minister who are about who are well over 100. It is assumed that no police officer is assigned to any MMP. Mm. No police officer is uh, assigned to corporate war, you know, like the banks, the savings, and road companies. Assuming they are all up. Yeah. That is one to eight hundred. So you can imagine already a chunk of it is gone. And in urban areas such as Accra, Marsi, Kaswa, it is even more staggering because there are unconfirmed figures that puts it at one officer to over 2,000 citizens. So already we don't have enough men. So the only way out for now, because considering the timing, we cannot, you know, recruit more officers, is for them to seek assistance from the military, from uh, the immigration, from mm. prisons, and security uh, uh, services. It is also extremely important that they engage the people in the security management process. Because yeah. mostly, um, the police get their intelligence from civilian sources. But if you don't harness your relationship with the civilians based on mutual trust and respect, obviously, you're bound to have people not, you know, encouraged mm -hmm. to give out information to the police. But once there's goodwill between the police and the civilians, once the people understand their role, so far as safeguarding the peace and security of Ghana is concerned, going into the election, I'm sure it would it would reduce the burden on, okay. on the police. Unfortunately, however, currently that we is not how that. things happen. But at what point do we have to deploy these security men? Because we had an earlier conversation with former Chief Superintendent Naya Kubu, and he says that these men should be deployed before the elections, days before. But knowing again that we have these hotspots and clearly seeing what has happened in some of these constituencies, should we not have the policemen on the ground already by now? Oh, we should. Because there are instances of pre, during, and post election uh, uh, violence. And it's only proper that now uh, we have more men on the ground to at least um, send a clear message to potential trouble forces that indeed we are large and in charge. We are in control of the situation. And it's also a confidence-building measure. You know? Currently, a lot of Ghanaians are not so confident in the ability uh, of the police to ensure security during the election. There's so much fear, you know, that sense of uh, insecurity amongst a lot of uh, the Ghanaian population. Mm. So it is only, that it is only for most sense for crying out loud for us to 
and leave our homes and see alleged police. The visibility is extremely key. Unfortunately, even at the very hot spot, mm. we don't have men on the ground. So that, you know, leaves so many questions and answers whether indeed uh, we know what we're doing, whether indeed we are prepared uh, for this election. Is the security or the police service impotent, like, um, you know, the incumbent MP of the Dodododo constituency uh, has said during the clash or after the clash, he says that they are impotent. And that's because for a number of issues that have come up in that constituency, uh, they have not been able to attend to them and, you know, bring about a resolution. And I'm asking this because, again, in that same interview with the former chief superintendent, he says, and I wasn't expecting this to come from him, but he says that maybe it's about time we get our politicians to swear by a deity to ensure that peace is maintained in these communities. So that probably speaks a lot to the security agencies and the level of powerlessness that they may have at the moment in terms of uh, protecting the peace of the society. Well, I've been following the police uh, for some time now, and I do um, know in fact, their contribution they've made to us handling in our democracy since the inception of the Fourth Republic. Um, I do also understand how difficult it is in certain situations for them to do their work. Uh, there are instances they would arrest these guys who perpetuate uh, the, 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 the troubles. And the next minute, it is the honorables mm. who should know better, who should set as examples, who would call the traditional or the original or the uh, station officer to tell them to let them go. And if you don't let them go, you enter their bad books and like they always do, change your speaking place. So yeah. it becomes extremely difficult for them to do their work. However, when there's inconsistent enforcement of the law, it is the recipe for disaster. Recently, we had a group of young men in Atawasi Beach, a police station. Mm. They completely disrespected the police. At the point, one of them even sat on the counter, you know. Because according to them, if their boys were arrested, nobody from the other side was arrested. Was arrested and when yeah. they were arrested, they asked them why you are arrested as a head of the order from above. So you see, it is creating a discord between the population and the police. Mm. Because if you report a crime to the police and nothing is done about that, you think next time if something similar happens to you, you would report to the police. Worst case scenario, you might take the law into your own hands. In, in a quest to defend yourself, because you don't trust the police to defend you. Mm. And trust me, that on an unprecedented scale, more and more Ghanaians are acquiring weapons. Yeah. And for flat consent to me, according to the Small Arms Commission, mm -hmm. is we have well over 1.2 million Ghanaians who are armed, yet last year only 40,000 of them renewed their line system. Yeah. That is that have ever been licensed. How about the proliferation of small arms and light weapons from other parts of the continent? How about the local gun manufacturing industry in, in Ghana? That is that is motivating some of these guys to foment trouble. Yesterday, I was with a queen mm -hmm. of um, uh, 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 Alabanyo, uh, Mamaga, uh, 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 at the stakeholders' uh, dialogue and we this later. And then, according to her, manufacture of guns, mm. it, it killed it something almost everybody there is able to do. What are we doing about it? Are we pretending that it is not an issue at all? And I don't know whether you saw the video of the young man firing at the duty with you. I have undergone tactical training for because of my self-protection. Okay. Yeah. And the way he was firing, trust me, it would go to hit it would, the bullet would just hit someone who has absolutely nothing to do with what was happening there. Mm. Because the way he was firing, considering the trajectory, it didn't look like he was firing at his opponents. He was firing into the air in a, a very awkward manner, which yeah. would go and hit someone with the story building. You know, under normal circumstances, if you are firing into the air, it has to be seventy to ninety degrees perpendicular. Okay. So when the bullet goes by the time it stands, the velocity will be greatly reduced, and if it hits anyone, it will not be fatal. So these are legitimate issues we need to address. However, the police, I must say, appears to be impotent on this occasion, because the politicians don't even respect the police. So, and the so, police fear politicians. So would you say then that it was okay for Honorable Neil and Ivan Apoy to describe the police as impotent, because clearly that's what you're also saying? Well, impotent is inaction. Yeah. It's synonymous. Okay, so if, according to him, you are slapped in front of the police station mm -hmm. and nothing is done about it, uh, uh, the, the perpetrator has not been arrested, what would you call that? Okay. Potence? It is impotent. How, how would the 
police service or the security win back, um, you know, the public sympathy and love? Because clearly, a lot more Ghanaians are acquiring arms, whether legally or illegally, because they mm -hmm. want to protect mm -hmm. themselves. We all cannot predict what's going to happen during the elections, but clearly, from what we're seeing, there will be pockets of violence across the country. And as a result, I want to protect myself because I don't necessarily trust in the police. How then... Uh, can the police take advantage of this and win back public sympathy so they can bring this under control? It's as simple as the laws working. The laws must work. If the laws don't bite, next time I intend engaging in an illegality, I'll be motivated because A, did it, nothing happened to him. So the possibility that if I also do it, nothing would happen to me is high. Mm. I'll be able to win it. If I feel that I'm related to a, a politician who has so much influence, or I'm a campaign manager. If I do the wrong thing, he would always call the police and they would get me released. Obviously, I'll be motivated to doing that. The laws must work. The okay. police should investigate, oblivion of whichever side of the political divide the person comes from, okay? Oblivion of the person's cloud. The police must ensure that the laws work. We have okay. anti-vigilantism and other related offenses law. Mm -hmm. Has it been anyone? No. It exists only on paper. So the surest way to get the people to respect, to have confidence in the security services, is for the security services to make examples of some of these wrongdoers. Okay? Let yeah. us get them arrested. Let us get them dealt with rigorously and rigorously according to the law, and it will serve as a disincentive to others who might want to do the same line. But okay. let's not forget how I'm concerned. Recently, uh, the Peace Council called on the police to make available its findings mm. on the uh, firing of the, of the gun yeah. at the registration center. Mm. To date, nobody knows what has come of it. So that can only mean one thing. It's been swept under the carpet. Okay. So the next time another person from the other side of the political divide comes to fire a gun, I wonder what moral temerity we would have to call for his head. Mm -hmm. So we are, we, are, we are glorifying, we are celebrating impunity. And that is the cause of all that we're saying today. All right. Thank you so much, Adib Sani, for speaking to us this morning. And yes, he's a security analyst, and we've been talking about the hot spots. But we're also going on social media quickly, um, well, shortly, to find out what you make of security of institutions, actually, that have promoted peace ahead of the 2020 elections. We're giving you the option to choose very good, good, poor, or very poor in terms of uh, how you rate their uh, promotion of peace ahead of the elections. Also remember to leave a comment. The hashtag is election360, hashtag election command center. Shortly, we'll give you the opportunity to call in and also tell us what you think about some of these um, you know, issues of violence that have taken place in some of the constituencies. Keep watching. We'll be right back.